Today we will look at diseases associated with scleroderma. If you haven't already seen the previous video on scleroderma, we suggest that you watch those videos first. It is estimated that 80% of patients with scleroderma have pulmonary disease. The presence of pulmonary disease leads to a poorer outcome and is now the leading cause of death amongst patients with scleroderma. The estimated death rate from pulmonary disease of all causes is 33%. The picture of the lung shows extensive fibrosis as indicated by the arrows. One type of pulmonary disease is pulmonary fibrosis which occurs in 30 to 70% of patients with scleroderma. Pulmonary fibrosis can occur in both diffuse and limited cutaneous scleroderma. It is characterized by an increase in fibroblasts and myofibroblasts which leads to scarring of the lungs. This is demonstrated by the picture which shows the scarring and decreased oxygen flow in the lungs. Myofibroblasts are cells that secrete contractile proteins which leads to contraction of the tissue. On the other hand, fibroblasts are involved in wound repair and scarring. In the picture, you see the fibroblasts which are blue secreting a protein called collagen to help with wound healing. These cells result in increased scarring of the lungs. The symptoms of this disease include shortness of breath, dry cough, and lung stiffness. During this video, we will look more specifically into idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, which is a more specific type of fibrosis that targets the alveolar epithelial cells. Alveoli are the tiny air sacs in the lung where gas exchange occurs. So now that we have a good background understanding of the disease, we can move on to talking about how exactly this occurs. Unfortunately, it is still largely unclear about how the mechanism of this disease works. One proposed theory looks at both genetic and environmental factors. Epithelial cells are a major cell type that make up the skin. These mutations prevent proper responses to injuries from environmental factors like smoking. To account for this decreased function, epithelial cells within the lungs release molecules which promote fibroblasts which as stated previously is a major cell type involved in fibrosis and this leads to the excessive wound healing. So, you may be wondering what causes fibrosis? Smoking has been identified as a major risk factor associated with fibrosis. One study showed an increased risk of 60% for individuals who smoked at any point in their life. Also, work environments which are dusty like farming, hairdressing, and stone cutting have also been associated with an increased risk for fibrosis. Other potential causes of fibrosis include infections and chronic aspiration. Aspiration is the process of breathing in materials which should not go into the lungs. In the picture, you can see that the alveoli are filled with a fluid from aspiration which is why the person is coughing. Let's now dive into treatment options. During the early stages of the disease, shortness of breath primarily occurs during a physical activity. This leads to a decrease in the activity of patients suffering from this disease. This inactivity leads to muscle loss and decrease the function of the lungs. Pulmonary rehabilitation has been shown to improve fibrosis and improve breathing. Pulmonary rehabilitation is used for a number of lung-related diseases and is not used as a replacement, rather a complementary with other treatments. It involves doing a number of different activities including exercise and breathing techniques. Lung transplantation and pharmaceuticals are also potential treatments for this disease. Some pharmaceuticals include nincadenib and pyrfanidone. Nintadenib targets growth of fibrotic changes in the lung, while pyrfanidone is an anti-fibrotic and anti-inflammatory pharmaceutical. We hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.